Hey everybody, how's it going? Scott Spritzer here at DocSports.com and welcome to the update for Friday, April 26th. We've got a free play coming up in just a moment and we're going to continue our look at the NFL uh, schedule over under wins totals. Another team that we're going to have for you in just a bit on this report. Before I get to that though, a quick note, if you've yet to become a member over at DocSports.com, it's a real cool way to give it a trial run. You click on the link below the video and you get set up for a free $60 account. Use those free 60 bucks on any of my daily packages over at DocSports.com. NBA, Major League Baseball, NHL, it doesn't matter. The choice is yours. $60 free account. Use it on any of my daily packages over at DocSports.com. And again, it all starts by clicking on the link below the video. All right, last night uh, we had a split. We passed to the NHL last night. We are in action tonight. More on that in a bit. And we've got a series play for you from the NHL. Uh, we did uh, drop one in baseball. We had our perfect run this week going back to Sunday. in baseball snapped last night with 0-1 uh, with the small favorite of Yankees. They weren't too big of a favorite in that game last night uh, against the Angels. And uh, they did jump out to a nice 4-0 lead and then fell apart. Uh, we did win again last night in the NBA. We had the Spurs last night. We're now 28-13. and It's almost 70% winners with our last 41 NBA plays up over $4,300 for $100 per unit betters. And we're back at NBA action on Friday. In fact, here's what we got going. I've got a five-unit play in the NBA. Uh, tonight's Game 6 clash between the Warriors and the Clippers. We've got Major League Baseball. We've got one play, a mismatch play for you on Friday. All of the price is certainly not priced as though it's a mismatch, so that's cool. And we've got an NHL side for you on Friday night. We've got two more series getting underway on Friday one of them happens to be a play for us on Friday night. So that's everything, man. That's a lot of stuff going on on Friday, led by that five-unit NBA play. <clears throat> we'll look to extend our NBA run to 29-13 and 13 with our last 42 as we continue uh, to beat up on these NBA lines. Uh, we'll get to, all, uh, to our free pick in just a moment. But first, a quick note, I wanted to jump back into our NFL discussion. We've been doing a team a day the last couple of days, and uh, we've so far been looking at the AFC West with Kansas City, uh, the Oakland Raiders, uh, also the Chargers. Today we're going to look at the Denver Broncos as we close out the AFC West. Over-under wins total is seven. Listen, the defense, as you know, and as we all know, has been great under Vic Fangio. No doubt about it. I don't see a big drop-off. They'll be good again this year, but the offense has been another story for most of the last decade, even when they uh, won everything under uh, Peyton Manning's direction at quarterback. Listen, I don't know that I like what's going on here. They went out, they got Joe Flacco. Uh, and by the way, I still think Baltimore is going to suffer, obviously, growing pains with Lamar Jackson. Didn't like his performance too much last year. Maybe Harbaugh sees something in him uh, that we don't as an NFL quarterback. I'm not sure he's going to be able to be trained to stay in the pocket a little bit more than he already has. Uh, we'll see. Maybe. I mean, the guy's obviously gifted uh, like you wouldn't believe and we'll see if he can adjust to the NFL style of play a little bit more. In the short time, though, they did make their choice, and they got rid of Flacco, and I get it. I mean, he's on the downside of his career. If you look at what Joe Flacco's numbers are the last few seasons, it's not been good when he's been healthy. Um, so I'm not sure that Denver is going to be able to get a lot out of Joe Flacco. It just seems like uh, just year after year, this team kind of like plugs a hole with a temporary plug in the dam, so to speak, when it comes to the quarterback position. Last night in the draft, their first choice, they go out and they get Noah Fant, Noah Fant, I should say, out of Iowa, the tight end. And here's the thing about him. Joe Flacco with the Denver Broncos. You're going to have to pass protect like crazy all season long. Fant's not your typical tight end. He's going to be a good pass catcher, I would guess, at the NFL level, just like he was at the collegiate level. But he can't line up like a traditional tight end outside the right tackle position and offer pass blocking. I mean, he's really going to have to pick up his game in pass blocking if he's going to line up at a traditional spot. Now, a lot of people project that he's going to be more in the slot uh, for the Denver Broncos this year early on, and we'll see. I don't think he's going to help out in pass blocking too much, so we'll see if they move into the slot. Listen, when he was in Iowa, he obviously did quite well as a receiving tight end, uh, but they just haven't had a good Really, a really good season out of the tight end position has Denver in about four years. So we'll see if Noah Fant can uh, start to right the ship, so to speak, at that position and with this part of the Denver Bronco offense. But you look at that, you look at Flacco on the downside of his career, even when he's been healthy last couple of years, he's not put up great numbers, not put up good numbers for that matter. Uh, the defense should be good. Uh, schedule is going to be tough. Listen, I have the Broncos pegged for six wins to get right to the point. Win total is seven. 
so you know which way I'm leaning. And there's my basic thumbnail on the Denver Broncos. And of course, we'll update some of these uh, in, in six, eight weeks from now. Uh, but I do like to do this every single year and get out in front of things in the NFL. That's why we've been uh, as successful as we have been in the NFL for several years now. Uh, and that's what we're going to do here is look each and every day to a different football team, give you a short thumbnail sketch if you're new to these. And uh, what we'll do is give you our leans and maybe even a play on the wins totals. Last night we talked about a play on the Oakland Raiders under the wins total of six. And uh, that is a definite play. This one a lean under seven wins with Denver. Might have a play on the under a little bit later this summer. We'll let you know if we do. But that'll wrap up the AFC East. Uh, we'll jump into, excuse me, the AFC West. We'll jump into the AFC East, the New England Patriots and all their rivals uh, on tomorrow's video. We'll start hitting that. In fact, we'll probably start right away with the New England Patriots, give you our thoughts on the Patriots and whether or not we think that they're going to top their wins total this season or not. But anyway, lean on Denver under seven wins. As we mentioned yesterday, the Oakland Raiders is a definite play for us on the under. Uh, the Chargers were kind of like caught right where that sports book has the number at at 10. We think Chargers are probably in for 10 wins this season. And our very first AFC West team, just recapping, was Kansas City. We gave our reasons why we think they're going under. Of course, this horrible news uh, that is has been coming out and uh, the allegations – against Tyreek Hill make Kansas City's issues even worse going into this particular season. So, uh, But anyway, that's our thoughts on the AFC West. We'll jump into the AFC East beginning with tomorrow's report. Uh, let's get to our free pick for Friday. We're going to turn to baseball action. And we're going to back the St. Louis Cardinals, and they're going to send Michaelis to the mound against East Glifani and the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, here's the thing. Now, these two bullpens have both been pretty good ERA-wise, both sub-4. Uh, on the season, I, I think since he is third in baseball, at least going into uh, last night's games, third in ERA out of the bullpen, Cardinals right behind him in fourth. But it's the offensive power of the St. Louis Cardinals, run scoring ability, team batting average, OBP, uh, that is just head and shoulders and then some uh, better than the Reds. In fact, the Reds are basically dead last in those two categories on offense that I just mentioned. You've also got the Cardinals who are averaging over five and a half runs per game on the year. They've actually done quite well at home uh, against right-handed starters so far this season, where Cincinnati in the spot they're in tonight on the road against righties has been kind of weak in their seven games in this situation, and they're only averaging about three and a half runs per game on the year overall. Going back to last season, when you look at what these two teams did in this spot, it was basically about even as far as run scoring ability was concerned. But of course, the Cardinals beefed up the lineup in the offseason. Already a plus 33 run differential for the St. Louis Cardinals. We'll have them as our free pick today and look for them to win their sixth straight game. St. Louis, uh, that'll be with Michaelis over DeSclafani and the Reds. And again, repeating what we got going on Friday, uh, we've got a five-unit play in the NBA. One again last night with the Spurs. We're now on a 28-13, and 69% NBA run. We've also got Major League Baseball and NHL all going on Friday, all the plays available Friday morning only at DocSports.com. And don't forget about that $60 free account. If you've yet to become a member, you can start by just clicking on the link below the video to get set up for the free $60 account. All right, listen, if you like these videos, be sure to click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. We appreciate those who have done so thus far. Scott Sprunch at DocSports.com right back here Saturday morning, about 4.30 a.m. Eastern, 1.30 a.m. Pacific. Let's put Friday in the win column.